<laughs> is, where do you sell that on? Cars.com or what? I've never done this before. So I'm like, I put it on like Craigslist, <laughs> like eBay. For a, te- for a Tesla Model 3, you put it on <laughs> Craigslist. I'm sorry. That's just not appropriate. I don't know what to do. I've never you done this. You need like an auction house. Maybe. It's maybe. like Sotheby's. <laughs> I don't All I right. need to get advice. Okay. All right, welcome to Geared Up, brought to you by National Car Rental. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Well, we have a big show today. Yes, we do. We are going to be talking about the highs and lows of PAX West, the big gaming convention mm-hmm. where both Andrew and I spent time this weekend. Yes. Plus, we got a bunch of smartphone leaks to talk about. So many leaks happened this past week, one of them being uh, the first time in history, Apple. Un- unprecedented. Wow. Yes, huge. And we're going to be going hands-on with a brand new device. I literally just picked this up at the store this morning. I was the first person to get it at the Microsoft store. Oh, really? Yes. Well, nice. at this particular Microsoft mm-hmm. store that I went to. And I'm sure somebody on the East Coast got it before Probably. I did. It is the Xbox Adaptive Controller. It was designed with accessibility in mind, but it's really one of those devices that brings a lot of potential benefits for other people too. So uh, looking forward to, to diving into that. So I just have to I know we only address the live stream during breaks. Yeah. But I just glanced over and someone said, What's the price for the iPhone ten S and the new Apple Watch? I'm only asking because you're only allowed to donate so much blood at once. <laughs> well, it just, it just caught me. That we, was, can get, hilarious. we can get into this later on. Yes, but, we'll but, be talking about yes, that later. But I should say that the name in particular and the way that you can mispronounce the name, and I think the way that a lot of people will mispronounce mm-hmm. the name of the iPhone XS, yes. is appropriate. I think so. Let's talk about that later on. First off, let's talk about PAX. Okay. This is a gaming convention. For people who don't know what PAX yeah. is, yeah, what is exactly. it? Exactly. It's a gaming convention for fans, really. It was started in the Seattle region in 2004 by the Penny Arcade webcomic. Random trivia, Andrew. Okay. The space we're sitting in yes. used to be occupied by Penny Arcade. Oh, I don't know if that. you know that. Back I in the day, we that. initially so sublet. This, yes. this room that we're in right now. Yeah, this is actually where they, when we moved in, they had things on the windows that basically had like a pack schedule, you know, check off wow. in terms of what they, they like to draw in marker on the windows. Okay. At any rate, PAX has a long history in Seattle. It is now a global phenomenon. The original PAX, which was called the Penny Arcade Expo, started in Bellevue back in 2004. It went on to become PAX Prime, and now okay. it's called PAX West. It's held every Labor Day weekend in the Seattle region. Right. And- what happens is that you get basically 70,000 game fans or more <laughs> on the show floor in the Washington State That's Convention Center. That's how many folks they've had in years past. I think that might be a wow. cumulative total in terms of okay. the, the turnstile over the four days. Okay. It's a giant convention, but it was difficult to navigate this year, even more than in years past, for me, even with a media pass. And with that, it was kind of an interesting example of what can happen when gamers aren't necessarily the first priority of a convention like this. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. Gamers gamers seem to be the first priority, actually, because it was about, hey, everybody's equal, no matter who you are. Well, that... Yeah, it sounds like that was your experience, and that was not the experience that some of some others had. Interesting. So I know that you ran into that, and I think there might have been a specific crackdown on media getting actual precedence in terms yep. of the lines. Tim Ellis, one of our contributors, noticed that streamers in particular were given a lot of precedence over just everyday game fans. So if somebody in line at one of the booths saw a streamer yep. or was able to say, hey, come on up, that whole notion was sort of blown up in terms of the, the equality of... And of streamer would it. be someone who live streams on Twitch, I assume, who right. has a or mixer. sizable audience. Or, or Mixer. Yeah. Mi- yeah is whatever. YouTube gaming still around? It, it, it is. It's still there. It's okay. still there. Probably better than Mixer. But I, I mean, we had media badges. Media badges obviously look different than the regular attendee badges. And usually, you know, with media, you attend because not so much because you want to just play these games for fun, but because you want to actually report on, hey, I got my hands on Super Smash Brothers. Here's what I thought of the game. Um, and for me, it was like the Super, the Nintendo line, for example, was about an hour long. A lot of the lines that I wanted to get into even had a sign that said the line is capped. So you can't even get into the line even if you wanted to stand in line for an hour. Well, part of what was happening, and Tim reported on this, was this whole fascination with collecting the pins is also impacting the dynamic. Oh, What ended up happening in particular at 
the Nintendo booth was that some games were actually going unplayed. People were just waiting in line to get the pin associated with the game. What? And, and literally there were kiosks there for games that other people in line wanted to play and nobody was playing them because they were stuck in line behind all the people looking for pins. So I'm, I'm just here to get the pin and I'm out. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. So terrible. Difficult. Now I, took my daughter, my seven-year-old, on okay. Monday. I know you took your son. Yes, he's 14, twice and, as old. Exactly. And I think both of us had the same struggle. And in effect, since they were kind of ignoring our media badges, we had the the everyday attendees yes. experience. We could not play any games. Right. The only way I could have played games was to wait in long lines. And, you know, for him, for someone who's 14, going to PAX is like, wow, this is a, like, where else would you want to be in the world right exactly. now? With the exception of... Every game that I want to play, my dad says, no, we're not waiting in line for that. Mm. So we're going to walk around and find things that have no line, which means they're probably not that good (laughs) because otherwise, why would there not be a line there? The one game that we had a good time at was Pit People, and then later I find out, oh, this game came out five months ago. That's why there's no line here. <laughs> this, we can this, be playing this at home. This is the game where you're essentially dueling with the controllers, and you're controlling like some kind of... Dog? Yes. Yes. It, it, what, <laughs> no, what is, it's just different am I, characters. Am I thinking of the wrong? Okay, it's a bunch I'm, of different characters. I'm thinking of a different game. Okay. <laughs> that must be a different game. <laughs> dog. No. Okay. I Actually, I, I take that back. I remember Pit People now. The the one that I was talking about earlier was a different game. Okay. Pit People kind of looks like uh, a loose version of like Catan. It has these yes. different octagons, hexagons. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That one looks cool. I'm a big fan of Behemoth games. But yeah, it was just tough to, you know, be there. I know that if I was his age, I would be like, this sucks. Like, I'm at this thing and I can't play Anything cool because you're unwilling to stand in lines, but that's what everyone else is doing. How come they're all doing it and we're not doing it? The game that I really, or the platform that I really wanted my daughter to experience because we don't have a PS4, I wanted her to try out the PSVR. And so we actually waited in line for that and come to find out that was by appointment only. And you had to download the app and reserve a time. And then, of course, because there's no cell phone reception in the convention hall, I was sitting there. It was like I felt like I'm surrounded by all of this opulence and technology and and really kind Mm -hmm. of the the next cutting edge stuff. And I just I can't. It's this close and I can't can't experience a text message. (laughs) I couldn't download the app to reserve a time. Right. And uh, yeah. So there was one pin. I wasn't there to collect pins, but there was one pin where the guy was like, hey, yeah, just download our mobile game and we'll give you these. pins." I was like. I can't download anything right now. What do you mean download a game? Do yeah. you know where we are right now? So Now, I will say in terms of the games that some of our other contributors got to experience, Thomas Wilde, one of our writers, got to ch- spend a lot of hands-on time with the new Valve digital card game, okay. Artifact. And a bit of a womp womp from Valve because everybody's waiting for what Half Life Three or Portal Three is that Portal right? Three would be nice. Half Life yes. Three, are we still waiting on that? It's been like fifteen years. No, it's been uh, I think it's been about a decade. Actually. Oh, just not, only, not only ten. Years. Sorry, right? Sorry. So uh, that is really a new card game from Valve, and it's too bad that this is not basically coming after the sequels that everybody wants because his assessment of Artifact was that it's a pretty cool game and something that especially folks who like those kinds of card games, which are really hardcore gamers. Right. I mean, these are people who grew up on D&D. And mm-hmm. Were you a big Dungeons & Dragons player? I've never played it in my life. I can't believe I want to. Andrew, this should be the topic of a future show. I want to play it. We should have folks in here who know what they're doing. Can we do that? Claire. Claire. Claire <laughs> the producer of the show. Yes. That's a what great do you mean it's on your list? That's, it's, we need to do it. That's the, the hot new thing with some of these startup CEOs, by the way. They get together and play D&D. What? Yeah, it's a little old school. At any rate, Artifact, the game from Valve, coming out later this year. Worth checking out, even if you are disappointed that it's not the sequel to Portal or Half-Life. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. My daughter's favorite game, her game of the show. What is it? Meow Wars. That's the only game you can get in line for, isn't it? So it's apparently <laughs> it's apparently an artist slash developer who made it, and this is his pet project. I, I'm ah. we're, we're going to commercial. <laughs> this is this is crazy. It's a card. It's another card game, and it's funny because I was having a conversation with her on the show floor, telling her about Artifact, and she was like, "Wait a second, it's a card game? What? Why? Why would anybody play a card game?" On, uh, Digitally. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then we found Meow Wars, which as a seven year old was right up her alley mm-hmm. and she loves it. And it's actually, a, to your point, it's available now. So it's not like you're getting early access to right. these games. It's right. on, uh, Google Play, Android, iOS, and Steam. 
So check it out. PAX needs to have a media day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was told they had a media hour. They did. And I was there. And it started half an hour late. Oh, geez. And what? then here's the problem. The media hour is also open to other exhibitors. And so there were actually Ugh. quite a few people in there. And I had a hard time, even during the media hour, getting access to games. So and Fix I realized, this. I, yeah, I recognize that we're kind of preaching as media quote elites when we say this right but i understand that too yes but when people tune into the show they want to know they want to know what we thought of these games and you know we had hands-on impressions because some people couldn't no. make it out to the show we can't give them what they're hoping we can tell them because we didn't have access i can tell you that there are people out there who are thinking come on guys suck it up sit in line for two hours get all your friends to come on their media passes you know bring a squadron of people Fair. if you're dedicated to covering this stuff Spend the three you know hours what? that it takes to get up there and play the new Switch game. I feel you. Okay. I feel you on All right. that. So I, we, we hear, we hear what enough. you're saying, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So have we ranted long enough for one segment? Okay, All right. That's wow. the rant. Jeez. Um, we, we, I, I would like a firm commitment from Claire that D&D will happen so that we can report back okay. on well, this show. I, I, shouldn't we do it live? On the show? What? With commentary from she all says of the no. Twitch. All, we should do it live on Twitch. Live on with Twitch. commentary from all the people who are telling us how stupid we are. Okay, see that? So it wouldn't be the Geared Up show. It would just be like a, a bonus, a bonus sure, episode. Sure, yeah. Or whatever. I think there we should go. do it live. Claire, Claire's produce. saying no, so we'll, Claire, we'll, we'll see. Something's happening. <laughs> all right. Hey, we will be right back with actual news, including some of the latest smartphone developments and a screen from Samsung that might just blow your mind. That is coming up next on Geared Up. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Geared Up. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. It is time for the National Car Rental Story of the Week. That's right. Geared Up is brought to you by National Car Rental. Go national. Go like a pro. You can find Andrew's show, Technically Speaking, on the nationalcar.com control center or youtube.com slash nationalcarrent. What the heck is Technically Speaking? Andrew? Technically Speaking is the show where I tell you yep. all the best tech gadgets and gear that you need for traveling. So whether it's business travel or leisure travel, I kind of tell you just the best stuff that you should have with you to make travel easier or more fun nice. or more productive. All right. Good deal. So again, a big thanks to National Car Rental for sponsoring Geared Up. The latest tech puts you in the driver's seat of your travel experience. National Car Rental's Emerald Club We'll keep you there. Yes, it will. All right. What is the story of the week? Samsung is getting ready to unveil uh -oh. a foldable smartphone. This is crazy. So before you start thinking back to things like the Sidekick. Or the Razor. Or something else like a flip phone. Yep. They're saying that the actual screen. The display itself. Will fold. Yes. What do you think of this? Uh, well, most people don't know this, but when you look at your iPhone ten. The screen at the top where it has the, the notch. Are you about to tell me that it can actually fold? No, the, the screen is folded inside of the phone. Really? So the screen, I don't know if it's at the top or the bottom, but on one side oh. it actually folds around on the internal side. So that's not just a cutout, it's a fold under. Yes. What? So this display inside the iPhone folds. And we can, and you even see it on Samsung's devices because Samsung for years now has had devices where the edges of the screen curve down. Technically, right. right curved, and so the Apple one fold, does a complete, you know, one eighty degree fold. I don't know if it's flat, but, but it's it definitely a curve. But it's a fixed fold. In other words, it goes, it tucks under, yes. and that's part of the design. You can't actually like pull out the little. That's flap. right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But and the whole idea here is, in some way, and to be clear, they're just talking about this now. They mm -hmm. have not actually shown it, although they say they are very close to completing the development of it, and it could be detailed as early as Samsung's developer conference in November. Right, which is crazy because Samsung has already released their major phones for 2018, at least as far as what we would traditionally expect. They released the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus a few months ago, and then right before the iPhone you know, gets announced, they release the Galaxy Note line. So the Galaxy Note 9 just came out, what, like two weeks ago? And usually that's it for Samsung until the Galaxy S10. And we're hearing that, in, no, they may come back and say, hey, we're not done yet. Check out our new, the rumor name, Galaxy X. X. Not which, 10. Not 10. 
<laughs> Not Zen. Galaxy this... X, but they spell it Galaxy One Zero. But are you joking? No, I'm just kidding. That's, okay, a joke. That's a joke. Oh my god, you you almost <laughs> <laughs> just blew my mind. No, it's Galaxy X. Wow. It's Galaxy was, X. Yeah, that was good. I, that was really deadpan. That was really well done. <laughs> So, uh, but no, so, and, and to be clear, this phone allegedly would be similar to my, my phone here, but you can open it like a book and double the size of the display. Okay. Does this sound familiar at all to the Windows universe, to the Windows phone universe? This is, was, this is what? basically the device. Oh my God. No, they don't have it, which is I mean, the problem. They? they, they have been rumored off and on over the years to be, working on some sort of device like this. They always deny it. You know, Jay Allard back in the day was working on the courier at yes. their Pioneer Square Skunk Works. That looks and, so cool. And and it was basically going to be like a tablet for creatives that you could just sort of fold up. Creatives. Right. That's such a weird term. People who like to create things. Right. Like but all of us. This was basically two displays, though. Yes. The, and what we're talking about now is one display without any sort of plastic in between. Seen. True. You're basically folding the display in half when you close the phone. But more recently, Microsoft was talking about, or at least rumored to be working on a similar device, and I don't know the specifics on that to the level of knowing whether it was a hinge or an actual foldable display. I wonder if this announcement from Samsung that they're planning to come out with this isn't sparking some discussions inside Microsoft, like, hey, let's accelerate the development of this thing or let's revive this thing that we might have killed. Right. Because otherwise they're going to look like they're behind Samsung, although the practical realities they and are. the physics of consumer electronics are they probably could never get this thing out in time if Samsung is going to be oh, no way. detailing it in November. Yeah. Not, in, not releasing it in November, but Microsoft would have to announce it in October to mm-hmm. look like they were ahead of them. At any rate, fascinating story. And the, the key question here yeah. that the Samsung people are asking themselves, okay. according to their executives, is can it go beyond novelty? Can the idea of a foldable screen not just perhaps take up less space in your pocket, but also provide some kind of utility that would make you want to buy the device for more than just having a cool foldable screen? Okay. And they have not answered that question publicly yet. Do you have an answer to that question? I don't. And I've been thinking about this since reading that. Other than maybe some kind of weird input mechanism where... Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, my my mind is not big enough to figure this out. This is why we have hardware and software engineers in the world. True. Not just, you know, people like me. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking two, I have two ways of how this could look. Either it would be like, do you remember the Game Boy Advance that mm-hmm. folded? Mm-hmm. So you would have your standard size smartphone, yeah. which smartphones are getting bigger and bigger every year, and that would just fold in half. Yeah. So it would be a compact thing. But thicker. Or, but thicker. Yes. Or we would have something that is this size and folds this way like a book. So when you open it, you basically double your screen size. And then if you had a stylus or an S Pen, that would be a lot easier to to write and take notes on huh. if you had like double the size. It's more of a book shape. Oh, I than, see. You know what I mean? So, so, in its, it. so in its normal state, you have it. It looks like a smartphone. Yes. You're using it. But then when you want to go big screen, yeah. you basically get the equivalent of an external monitor in your pocket. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking as I far like as that. That, can, that would be different enough to be attractive. So essentially, you would have to be able to use the screen from the back side. In other words, when it's folded up in its... Either that, Folded or they would have state. another display over there. I okay. mean, or I mean, they really could just weave it through, though. Like yeah. they can put it there and then weave it through around the other side, okay. so it's really one long display. Okay. So again, this is just a report at this point, but Samsung is acknowledging that it's working on a phone with a foldable display, and we could see our first glimpse of it as soon as November. So that's story number one. You buying it? Yeah. You re- <laughs> there we go. Yeah. You're buying new tech. Yeah. All right. right. And it's Android. <laughs> we'll what if it runs Tizen? <laughs> no, only if it has Bixby. Okay, fair. It, it will definitely have a dedicated Bixby button All and right. Bixby display. So that is smartphone story number one. Smartphone story number two is what you called, Andrew, I believe, something that has never happened before on this level. That's right. There were two reports by 9 to 5 Mac, mm-hmm. kind of thinly sourced but clearly accurate. In yep. other words, they didn't say how they found out, correct? I think I know. Okay, you think yes. you know? You think Apple gave it to them? No, okay. absolutely not. Okay, can you say what your theory yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I was going to so, let you finish the intro. Yeah, I was going to say, so first off, essentially we got 
confirmation of the name of the next versions of the iPhone. We got our first glimpse, official glimpse of them. And also we got a look at the new Apple Watch Series 4. Correct. Both of which are expected to be announced at Apple's event on September 12th. Yes. So what was significant about these leaks? The most significant thing about these leaks is that we always talk about Apple leaks. Every year we're talking about, you know, we, last week we talked about Apple leaks and what we're expecting. The difference here, though, is that we saw official images from Apple, the images that they're going to use in their, whether it's their press releases or on stage, those images got leaked. We've never had that happen before. The closest that that happened was when the iPhone 7 was announced, right as they took the stage, the Apple Twitter account tweeted, here's the brand new iPhone 7 with all the features in the tweet. Basically, that tweet went live about an hour earlier than it should have because they hadn't they hadn't gotten to that point in the presentation yet. So 9 to 5 Mac has these images and we're going to talk about what they showed especially mm-hmm. in the series of the, the series 4 from mm-hmm. the Apple Watch. But where do you think they came from? So there was two schools of thought there. There was either Apple has a live stream internally where they test out because when they go live the day of, they don't, you know, you you kind of want to be prepared for that. So they test the stream. Usually they play old stuff on the stream. So they'll play, you know, last year's event just to make sure everything's working. Um, so one of the rumors was that they were playing the presentation from this year, this upcoming event, like a draft on like that a stream, run right? through like on a that. Through. So if, if that was the case, that would be one way to just screenshot those and, images and, and uh, tip off your friends at nine to five Mac. Exactly. The other one I heard was that you, they were just trying out URLs. So based on the history, like when the iPhone oh, 10 came smart. out, here's the iPhone 10's URL. So, okay, if we think the name is 10S, then let's try iPhone dash XS or iPhone dash X dash S or, mm. you know, just kind of messing around with the URLs to see if something would come up and something came up and grabbed the images and then that's it. So either way that it happened, or maybe it wasn't one of those two ways, but I think it's, it's definitely one of them. Um, the end result is, Apple's official images are now in the hands of the public. So what did we learn from them? What we learned was, number one, the iPhone XS is going to be available in gold with a stainless steel finish. Two sizes as this is all, you know, stuff we've talked about in the past. So you're going to have the iPhone 10 size and you'll have the plus size. So you'll have a uh, 6.5 inch version as well as the 5.8. And then the Apple Watch Series 4 will also come in that same uh, stainless steel gold finish, almost the same color as the Invite, the Gather Round Invite. Um, but that watch has now a full, almost like a full screen display with very minimal bezels, which is kind of where Apple's going across the board. So the iPhone 10 and the new phones, minimal bezels, the watch, minimal bezels, and then the rumored iPad Pro, which was not part of that leak. Um, but is expected to also have that same no bezel look. So that's kind of what Apple's going for with all of their upcoming upcoming products. And the Apple Watch in particular, there was a watch face that they're showing. It's a new round watch face. Maybe that's where the, you know, I always wonder what the invite is teasing, like right. gather round. Gather round. So it was gold and we see all this gold. And then the round watch face has nine complications on it. And a complication, if you're not aware, is basically you can add nine different pieces of information to your watch face. Um, currently, I think the most you can have is four. Mm. Yeah, I think it's four, maybe five. But so it's almost doubling now. So just because of that extra screen real estate that you're going to get on the watch. So those are the two things we found out. Not much more than that because we still don't know. You know, a lot of people are like, well, now we know everything. Well, we don't know yeah. about the processor. We don't know about the speed. We don't know. You know, we know what it looks like. We have the visual. But there's still things that Apple, you know, there's no way for us to know unless someone physically got a device in their hand. And then the last thing we learned was confirmation of the name, mm. the, the iPhone XS. iPhone XS. Which is visually the iPhone XS, uh-huh. which is how I think a lot of people will be making fun of this thing, right? Right. Because I it's think... going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> well, It's excessive. I mean, I think the the smaller version, the version that's the size of the iPhone X currently, is going to cost less 
than this year's iPhone 10 costs. So technically, it's going to cost a little less. So is the form factor, though, essentially the same? As same form the factor 10? as iPhone 10, and yep. then you'll have the the larger version as well. What did not leak was the entry level LCD iPhone, whatever that's going to be called. Which is, nine. you could think of it as the iPhone 9 because yes. it's the successor to the 8. Right. That Although, has not been. No home button. As no we home said, button. all yep. the new devices will have no home button. Same design. Yep. Okay. Yep. Full screen with a notch. All right. So our last smartphone leak wasn't so much a leak as it was a left behind. That Uh-oh. was the Pixel 3. Pixel 3 XL. The XL, which was left on in the back in, of a lift. In the back of a lift, which right. is reminiscent of the old iPhone left in a bar. That's right. Which, so there's many a joke years in here ago, somewhere. If you were around back in the day, the iPhone 4 was leaked by Gizmodo in spectacular fashion. Gizmodo back in that day would post maybe 25 stories a day. When you woke up that morning, there was one post and there was no post for like the next 48 hours. It was just, here's the new iPhone that's coming. Here's a video. And that, that was probably the, I don't know if there was been a bigger blog post text story ever. Like, that was huge. So what happened with the new Pixel 3 XL? Well, someone left it in the back of a lift. And then the... the So here's the thing. This phone has leaked so much that the driver of the lift saw it and knew, oh, this is the Pixel 3 XL. So let me take some pictures and send it because it was caught. Now, he, he returned it to the owner. But what's funny is... Oh, really? Oh, no. See, that's interesting. Yes. The lift driver returned it to the owner. Yeah. By the way... Android police has all the images. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> don't, worry, it, don't worry about it. I got you. I got your back. I'm giving you back the phone. I've already leaked all the yes. images. <laughs> so, you know, now I'm looking at it from the perspective of, man, this phone has leaked so much that he wasn't like, oh, what is what is this? This is a crazy phone. I've never <laughs> yeah, exactly, seen this. Exactly. He's like, oh, I know what this is. This is that Pixel 3 XL I've been seeing all over the place. Um, what, how many stars do you think he got from that, that writer? <laughs> that's, that's Four hilarious. stars. What was the problem? Well, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I don't know. Um, what's weird is Google is not announcing this phone until October. Yeah. So I'm, to, I'm, yeah. I'm shocked as to how many, like, it's been unboxed. It's been like, when did they start building these phones and putting them in boxes and full retail ready to ship because they're not announcing it for, you know, months later. Yeah. And yet people, when they leak it, it's like, here's the box. Let's open it up. Like they're unboxing it. Like it's brand, it's a brand new product they bought at the store. So, um, I am curious to know though, if you're out there, are you looking forward to the new iPhone? Or are you looking forward to the new Pixel? So for people who have not followed the whole Pixel evolution. Yeah. So the Pixel 3 is out. Pixel 3 is not out. It is not out. No. So it is going to be announced in October as yes, well? Yes, October. Along with the Pixel 3 XL. Correct. So what does this appear to represent in terms of the evolution of the Pixel line, which is basically Google's flagship Android phone? Yeah, you know, I think the Pixel has always stood above everyone else as far as the camera goes. Like, if you are into photography on your mobile phone, like if you like taking photos, there's no better camera than the Pixel. And this notch that everybody's complaining about, the notch is there because they're putting two high-quality front-facing cameras on the front of the device. So I'm assuming that's going to mean now the front camera is going to be just as good, if not better, than the back camera. I personally don't care about notches. They don't bother me. I've quickly found that when you look at a press photo on a website, the notch sticks out to your eye. But when you're actually using a phone... Your eyes stay at the middle of the display or lower where the keyboard is. You're not staring at the top where the notch is. So it's not going to really bother me. I'm looking forward to the Pixel 3 myself. Can they compete with things like the new iPhone, uh, Samsung's phones, or a foldable display from Samsung? I don't know. The Pixel hasn't always been a big seller for whatever reason that is. People are more just trust Samsung more on the Android side of things. But it's nice to see Google, you know, continuing to push the boundaries of what cameras can do. All right. That is a rundown, a giant rundown of all of the smartphone news. Apparently, we don't have to go to any of these events because <laughs> we, we already just know. learned everything that's going to be happening this fall. We will be right back going hands on with the new Xbox One adaptive controller. That's coming up next on Geared Up. Welcome back to Geared Up, brought to you by National Car Rental. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Hey, we're going to go hands-on. This thing is hot out of the store. I yes. was literally the first person in the University Village Microsoft store to get the Xbox One adaptive controller. So this just went on sale today. It literally just went on sale today. It is. Uh, we're recording this on Tuesday, September 4th. And 
yes, it is available at Microsoft stores. It's also available online. It is the Xbox Adaptive Controller, and it's basically a, a large gamepad. Yeah. And we have not even opened this thing yet, in part because the packaging itself is part of the experience. It, too, is meant to be accessible. Yeah. So let's try that out, actually. This is part of the thing. Do you, you want to? How do you, I don't know if it's accessible to the two people, but basically you got these two, <laughs> two, two loops. Two people. Two, two loops on the bottom, mm-hmm. and, and you basically just pull Oh, them. that was it? That, okay. I don't know. And then, and then you pull the tab. Pull the tab. You oh, know, pull the tab that way. That way. Now, here's what's interesting about the adaptive controller box. Now, obviously, you're using your hands. There we go. Okay, sorry. But Microsoft designed this box so that you can open it completely on your own using just your mouth. Right. So if you don't have hands. Or have use of your hands. Or use of your hands, you can still open this box all by yourself. This is really an interesting device. So as we said, it's meant for people with disabilities, and it is essentially a way to play Xbox One games using a, a large controller. So mm-hmm. you clearly have the, the larger buttons here and the, the larger um, D-pad and everything like that. But it also has on the back side a whole series of three and a half millimeter jacks. I thought the headphone jack was dead. <laughs> it is not. It is not. And also, Andrew, you were saying this is a USB three. Yeah, USB C. Yeah, USB C connector. Yep. And that actually will allow you to install and use with this controller all sorts of different accessories. You could use joysticks. You could mm-hmm. use things that are specifically meant for accessibility, like a sip and puff controller. Yes, there's another USB here, yeah. regular size on the other side. Right, right next to the actual headphone jack. Yes, so this is this is extensible in so many ways. So you can actually hear, I'm surprised, the, the regular Xbox controller, you don't get that kind of feedback with the click. No. Yeah, so that's that's what it sounds like when you press the buttons. Let's see. The D-pad, no, you don't get as much of a click. I'm, I'm surprised that it's not Those silent. large buttons, let me see this. So those are the A and B buttons. Wow, okay, so yeah, A and B buttons here. Interesting. So for people who are listening on the podcast, this is uh, just about, I'd say, about a foot long. Um, it's, oh, I don't know, maybe about an inch tall. Yep. And, uh, oh, what, what do you think, six inches deep? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not describing it very well, but it's white, and it has a, a just an array of microphone ports on the back. Now, check it, this out. On the bottom, it has the the screws you would use for a tripod. Yep. So you can mount it somewhere so you don't have to hold on to it. That's right. So you can buy this now at the Microsoft Store or online for $100. It just came out. And to me, this is something I want to try out and see if I can maybe get some USB accessories that Mm -hmm. would extend what I could do with an Xbox One. I think this is pretty cool. By the way, are we giving this away? Are we? We should. We're giving this away. Are we in a position to do a geared up giveaway? Claire, are we in that position, Claire? We are. We are. Okay, so... How do, how do these contests work as we're now doing it on the fly? Well, here? we're doing it on the fly, so we don't have the contest set up just yet. But by the time, so if you're watching on a live stream, it's not set up yet. By the time this makes it to the podcast, we can have this set up. And you'll just leave a link in the show notes to where people can go to enter. And the way you would enter is to simply be subscribed to Geared Up's podcast. The audio podcast. The audio podcast in your favorite podcast player. Take a screenshot showing that you're subscribed and just submit that to us. And you're entered to win. To me, the big picture theme here is Microsoft in particular has been focusing a lot on accessible design and making products that everybody can use. Yeah. Uh, and this is an example of the benefit of that because I think the interest in this goes far beyond people with disabilities. And other people are looking at this and saying, whoa, wait a second, are there other things that I could do with this controller? Mm-hmm based on all these inputs that we have. And I think it's going to be fascinating to see how this is used over the next few months as people yeah. try out different things with it. And so if you have ideas for how to, to use this, we'd love to, to hear them and, yes, and absolutely. Uh, maybe even try them ourselves. Kudos to Microsoft on this one. Um, both Sony and Nintendo don't have anything like this, have not announced anything like this. This was announced, I think, about a year ago. Um So there's been time for other gaming companies to announce a similar project, and they have not done so. So, um, again, shout out to Microsoft for making gaming something that's more inclusive. That's right. So if you're listening on the podcast, just go to the show notes or to geekwire.com slash geared up, and you'll find a link to the giveaway for your chance to win one of these new Xbox One controllers. Adaptive controllers. Speaking of which, you were talking about 
kind of playing around with this, plugging in joystick, seeing what you can do uh, with it with your Xbox One. Do you have an Xbox One yet? At the office. Oh, at the office. Yes. Okay, so you have not done what you said you would do last show, which is <laughs> Buy purchase. An Xbox. No, I have not gone for the, is it the All Access Yes, pass? the All Access. Not yet. You have not done it. Have you I've, gone? Have you reneged on that promise? I have not, no. You all, just haven't had time. Th- all good things come with time. <laughs> Fair, fair enough. <laughs> Including the all access pass. So we'll figure it out. I just, I, no, I was at the Microsoft store today. And, and as I said, I was the first one to buy this uh, at that store. And, and I, as I was leaving, actually, I thought to myself, I should have signed mm-hmm. up for my, because you have to go to the store first to oh, sign up right. for the right. all access pass. That's annoying. So, and that is the subscription bundle of hardware and games in case people are wondering about that. Yes. Okay. I have, by the way, before we finish, I did hear one other potential buyer of that. Of the all access because we were talking last week yeah. about who is this for, um, and one person said it's for people who buy PS4. You already own a PS4. Right. You've already invested, you know, hundreds or even a thousand dollars in your in your console and your games. It's a tougher pill for a lot of those people to say, okay, I'm going to go spend another, you know, big set of money on an Xbox, and now this allows them to just pick up an Xbox, have a hundred games on them, and be able to play online. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking at the charger here. It looks like they don't have an actual uh, charger to put into the wall. So you basically have to, is this sort of the old Amazon approach where you have to have your own plug? Oh, this is... So it's a a USB-C to USB-3. Yes. And presumably that's used for charging. USB-A to C. Or wait, use USB-A to C. Yeah. Okay. There's no, there's no, there's no adapter in here. Yeah, there's no power adapter. So yeah, so you can, it somewhere. so you can plug this into your Xbox and then plug this into there, and it would stay charged. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you plug it into your Xbox. Yep. Oh, that's what it in, is. Right into the Xbox. Oh, that, of course. I'm sorry. Okay, we're figuring <laughs> this out on the fly. You would not need a power adapter because right. it goes straight into your Xbox. Nor do I need gas for the Tesla. And, and <laughs> yes. Did we cut that from the show? No, or I left we keep, that. In. We kept. We I left, left that, that the hell. Yeah, in. but but it makes so this is not wireless. Is that what we're saying? I don't think it has to be wireless. I don't. I think it can be, though. I mean, I don't know. Now I'm just making guesses. It is. It is Xbox wireless, Bluetooth, USB con- right. connectivity. So you have all the options. Good. In addition to the three and a half millimeter headphone jacks. Cool. All right. That is it for Geared Up now that we've figured that one out. Just a reminder if you're not already, you should subscribe to Andrew's YouTube channel to see our live behind the scenes videos. That is at youtube.com slash gear live. You can also watch at facebook.com slash geekwire. And of course, you can subscribe to Geared Up in your favorite podcast app. Just search for Geared Up, two words, not one, in Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. If you like what we do, consider leaving us a rating and a review. It really does help other people find the show. Geared Up is a GeekWire podcast. You can see more from us at geekwire.com. And Claire McGrain produces the show and teaches us D&D. Yes, she will. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Until next time, I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Talk to you next time on Geared Up. Geared Up.